Hey, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to install and configure the Home Assistant Companion app for macOS. Then we'll look at some of the available features like device sensors, actions, and notifications. Last but not least, we are going to set up some automations in Home Assistant so you can get the most out of the Companion app in macOS. So even though you can access Home Assistant using a browser, the Companion app adds several features that you can use in Home Assistant. For example, you have sensors like the Active Sensor, which checks if the Mac is actively being used. If you have a MacBook, you have the Battery Sensor that tracks the battery state and the battery level. The list of sensors pretty much goes on. You can also create automations in Home Assistant to send notifications to your Mac. Apart from this, the Companion app also integrates with the Shortcuts app so you can have shortcuts that send data to Home Assistant. To install the Home Assistant Companion app, you can do it directly from the App Store. After you install it, you will need to connect it to your Home Assistant instance. So open the Companion app. In the Welcome screen, click on Continue. The app will scan your network to locate the Home Assistant instance. However, if it doesn't find it, you can enter the Home Assistant IP address by clicking the button below. If you have to manually enter the address for your Home Assistant, make sure that you add HTTP colon forward slash forward slash at the beginning and port 8123 at the end. After selecting your Home Assistant instance, a pop-up window appears where you will need to sign in. And the companion app is ready to go. If you go to Settings, Devices and Services, the Mac will now show under the mobile app integration. Click on it and you will see the available sensors from your Mac that you can use with Home Assistant. Alright, now let's go over the Companion app's available settings. In the menu bar, click on Home Assistant and then Preferences. On the General tab, you can select to have the Companion app launch when you turn on your Mac. You can also select if you want to have the app on your dock or in the menu bar. If you have more than one Home Assistant instance, you can go to the Servers tab and add additional instances. Just click on Add Server and the Companion app will start searching for any other Home Assistant instance in your network. Under the Location tab, you can enable and disable location tracking. If you click on Location Permission, it will take you to the System Settings and open the Privacy and Security option. Then under Location Services, you can allow Home Assistant to determine your location. Under Notifications, you can enable if you want to receive Home Assistant notifications on your Mac. If you click on Permission, it will take you to the System Settings and the Notifications option. In there, you can then toggle the option to allow Home Assistant notifications. In the Action tab, you can create different actions for Home Assistant automations and use them in the Widgets section in macOS. If you have scenes created in Home Assistant, they will also show here and they can also be used in the widget section just like Actions. We'll go over Actions in more detail shortly. The Sensors tab shows all the available sensors that you can use. You can then disable any of the sensors that you don't want to track in Home Assistant. Just click on any of them and then uncheck the Enable option. Here you can also configure how often the sensors update. However, some sensors will automatically update more often, no matter the time frame. Next, let's take a look at Actions and check how they work with automations in Home Assistant. Actions are buttons that you can set up in the Companion app and use them in the widget section on your Mac. When you click on an action, it sends an event to Home Assistant, which you can then use that event as a trigger in an automation. To create a new action, go to Preferences and under the Action tab, click on Add. A new action is created and you can click on it to configure it. In the Configuration page, you can set up a name, which will be the event name sent to Home Assistant. If you have more than one Home Assistant instance, you can select the server to which you want the action sent. The description text and the icon is what you will see in the widget section on your Mac. You can customize how the action looks in the widget section by changing the background color, text, and the icon color. For this example, I'm just going to set up an action to trigger one of my desk lights. So I'm going to set up the name to desk light, the description text to just desk, and the icon, I'm going to set it to the desk lamp icon. For the appearance, I'm going to set it with a white background, gray text, and icon. After that, we can save the changes to the action. Next, we need to create an automation that will use the event from this action as a trigger. So in Home Assistant, go to Settings, Automations and Scenes, click on Create Automation, 
and then click on Start with an empty automation. On the triggers, click on Add Trigger and select Event. In the event type, enter iOS that action fired. And for the event data, enter action name colon and within quotes enter the name for the action, which for this example is Desklight. After that, add a new action and select call service. For the service, select light.toggle. On the target, click on choose entity and we'll select the light we want to control, which is the desk light. Lastly, click save and on the pop-up set up a name for the automation and click save again. There are two ways that we can trigger actions. One, you can click on actions on the menu bar and see the current actions that you have available. And two, we can add the home assistant widget with the action we created. So open the notification center and then click on edit widgets. Click on home assistant and under actions, you can select which size widget you would like to add. After that, just click on it to add it to the notification center. If you have several actions created, you can click on the widget to choose which action you would like to see on the widget. If you click on the widget, it will toggle the light on and off. Now there's something to have in mind. For the action to work when you click on the widget, the Home Assistant Companion app will need to be running. And anytime you click on the widget, it will bring the Companion app to the foreground. So if the app is minimized or not running, when you click on the widget, it will open it every time. It's a little annoying, but there's a workaround for this and it's by using the Shortcuts app in macOS. If you have the Home Assistant Companion app already running, it won't bring the app to the foreground every time you run a shortcut. Another good thing about using shortcuts is that in some cases, you won't even need to create an automation in Home Assistant. Let's create the previous example using shortcuts. Open the Shortcuts app and click on the plus icon to create a new shortcut. At the top, set up a name for the shortcut. Also click on the icon next to the name and set up an icon and a background. On the right side, you have the action library. Search for the dictionary action, drag it to the middle or double click it to add it. Then on the dictionary action, click on the plus icon. Under key, type entity ID. For the type, leave it set to text. And for the value, enter the name for the entity you would like to control. The information set up here in the dictionary action will be the service data sent to Home Assistant. Next, we need to add another action, so search for Home Assistant and add the Call Service action. Click on Service, search for Light.toggle and select it. Then click on Show More. If you have more than one Home Assistant instance, you can choose the correct one on the server. In the Service Data field, it has the dictionary action already added, containing the service data to pass to Home Assistant. Uncheck the option Show When Run, so you don't get a notification every time you run the shortcut. The Shortcuts app doesn't have a widget for the Notification Center in macOS. There's a Shortcuts drop-down menu on the right side of the menu bar. When you click on it, you can see your shortcuts and run them from there without opening the Shortcuts app. To add a specific shortcut to that menu, click on the Shortcut Details icon on the right and check the option Pin in Menu Bar. You will have to do this for every shortcut you would like quick access to from the menu bar. One of the Mac sensors that I like using in automations is the Active Sensor. This sensor has a few attributes that you can use in automations. For example, the screen of attribute. With this attribute, I have an automation that will turn off my monitor lights when the screen goes off and then turn them back on when I'm back at the computer. There's also the terminating attribute which I use in another automation to turn off the monitor lights when I shut down the computer. Another helpful automation I use is sending notifications to my Mac when someone rings a doorbell. The notification displays an image of who is at the door. I also have a smart lock on my front door, so I added an action that I can click to unlock the door. Let's set up an automation that will toggle the monitor lights on and off when the computer screen is on or off. In Home Assistant, go to Settings, Automations and Scenes, click on Create Automation, and then start with an empty automation. Click on Add Trigger, and in the drop-down, select State. Under Entity, search for the binary sensor that active entity for the Mac. Under Attributes, select Screen Off, and set the two state to True. Then change the Edit More for the trigger from Visual Editor to YAML. The True state is a Boolean, so we need to remove the double quotes, otherwise the automation won't work. Duplicate the trigger entity, and change the True state to False. Next, under Actions, 
add an action and select if then. For if, click on add a condition and select state. Add the binary sensor that active entity for the Mac. Set the attribute to screen off and the state to true. Then change to YAML mode for this condition and remove the double quotes on the true state. Under then, add an action and select call service. Set the service to light that turn off. On the target, click on choose entity and select the light to control. We need to add the action that will turn the lights back on when the screen is on. So click on add else, add action and select call service. Set the service to light that turn on and choose the light on the targets. Lastly, click on save, set up a name for the automation and click on save again. Now when you lock your computer and the screen turns off, the monitor lights will turn off automatically. When you're back to the computer and the screen turns on, the lights will also turn back on. Let's take a look at the automation to turn off the monitor lights when the Mac shuts down. Create a new automation, add a state trigger, and select the binary sensor that active entity for the Mac. Set the attribute to terminating and set the two state to true. Change the edit mode for the trigger to YAML mode and remove the quotes for the true state. Then we want to add a condition to check if the monitor lights are on before running the action. So click on add condition, select state, then select the monitor lights and set the state to on. After that, add an action and select call service. Set the service to light that turn off and on the targets, we'll choose the monitor light entity. Lastly, save the automation. And now anytime you turn off your Mac, the automation will check if the lights are on. And if they are, it will run the action to turn them off. All right, the last automation I want to show you is the one to have a notification sent to the Mac when someone rings a doorbell. The automation will show a screenshot of who is at the door and an action button to unlock the door. So create a new automation, click on add trigger and select state. Select the doorbell entity and for the two states select detected. Under actions, add a new action and select if then. Under if, add a state condition and set it to the binary sensor that active entity for the Mac. Then set the attribute to screen off and the state to false. Change to the YAML editor and remove the double quotes from the false state. Next under then, click on add action and select call service. Set the service to camera that snapshot. On the targets, choose the doorbell entity and for the file name, enter the following. This will save the image on the www folder in the Home Assistant config folder and name it doorbell image.jpg. Add another action and select call service. Set the service to notify that mobile and select the option for your Mac. Set the message to there is someone at the door and the title to doorbell alert. We also want to send an image with the notification. So under data, enter image colon and the location for the image, which will be forward slash local forward slash doorbell image dot JPG. To add an action button on the notification to unlock the door, enter the following. We also need to create another automation that will run the command to unlock the door when we click on the unlock door action. Lastly, we want to group all notifications from this specific automation. So enter group colon and we can name the group doorbell alert. Click on save, name the automation and click save again. Next, create a new automation and set the trigger to event. Set the event type to mobile app notification action and under event data, enter action colon unlock door. Under actions, add a call service action Set the service to lock that unlock and choose the door lock on the targets. Save the automation and when someone rings the doorbell and the Mac is on, you will receive a notification with an image of who is at the door. You will also have an action button that you can click to unlock the door. So those are the automations I'm currently using with the Home Assistant Companion app for Mac. However, there's a lot more things that you could do. I would like to hear from you about how you guys are using the Companion app. So let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.